All right, so that's, I mean, that, we're, we're on the basically the bottom of, of the ninth here. Uh, we're almost finished. The last little bit of information I want to share with you is um, what's called filters and views. Up here at the top of the screen, you're going to see that there are three different filters that you can work with. There's a filter called machine ID, there's a machine group, and there's what's called a view. Now, these filters are possibly the most powerful part of Kaseya. They're very, very useful. Not so useful when you got two machines, but picture 200 machines. Let me show you, kind of give you some ideas on how to use them. Um, first thing, machine ID. I don't use this very often. Generally, when I want to do this, let's say I want to work on this VAXP Pro machine, and it's kind of buried at the bottom of the list. Let's say I got 50 or 60. It's, it's kind of at the bottom of the screen, and I got to do a bunch of work on it. I'm tired of scrolling and trying to find it. So what I do is I just paste you know, enough of the name in, in the machine ID box to eliminate all the other machines. Okay, so, you know, what the way this thing works is, I mean, just like any good filter, all your machines from the outside world are pouring in, you know, your hundreds of machines, they've got to pass through these filters, and then the unfiltered is what shows up here. So we filtered out everybody but that machine group, you know, that machine ID. In fact, you can see, Kaseya thinks that only there's one machine. Now, the beautiful part of this, Dan, is when I go to other tabs, let's say I go over here to the uh, monitoring and I want to assign some monitoring to that machine, you're going to see that it only brings up the single machine. All the other machines are gone. I don't care whether I got a thousand of them there. They're all gone. I've only got one machine. I hit select all now and apply something. It's only going to apply it to that one machine or whatever the view is. Whatever you see here in account, that's how many machines are being affected by your action. Okay. Now, be careful that's because what I found is that this is a dangerous um, view. This is the one where we start getting the panic phone calls that we've lost all the machines because they got something stuck up here. Or they've combined <laughs> two of them together and it shows zero machines. Okay? Please remember to use the magic reset button. Click that magic reset button one time. That's why it's there. It'll erase everything and bring all your machines back. If you call us, we're only going to embarrass you. Okay, so just make sure you remember to click the reset <laughs> button. All right? So the Sounds next good. thing I'd is I want to talk about degree. machine groups. So remember I said, hey, if I call you from Maryland and I'm like, hey, I can't get out on the Internet, uh, you're going to jump to the Maryland group for ABC Company and you're going to look at all the machines. We don't have any machines in Maryland. We didn't put any in there, right? We didn't put any in there, right? They're all still hiding in the unassigned group. So how do we move machines from the unassigned group and get them into Maryland? Well, let me show you. We're going to use the change group function. So we're going to select the unassigned group, click the change group function, select the machines that we want to move. Let's say it's just this one machine. Select where you want to move it and click the move button. It's that easy. Boom, done. I want to take this one, and this is in the headquarter company, so I'm That's going to move that one to the headquarter company. Done. Now I've only, I've, I've only got, you see that? I mean, it's so simple to, to move them out of there. Why, 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 why do you need all those you know, deployment packages doing it for you? All right, so let's go back to where we were, agent status. And now, again, I call from Maryland, and obviously if I had more machines here, it would be more meaningful. But you would be able to see, again, the status. Remember, agent status, hey, I'm offline, but the other four machines are all online. Okay? So, um, you know, you can instantly see what's going on there. All right? Or I, could, so, I would assume that even sometimes, like, if they get, you know, like there's some viruses out there that I'll put an automatic proxy on Internet Explorer or something, that this would, the like say agent might even still check in, even though Internet Explorer is dead. Um, it potentially, yeah, it'll go through, right, and that's, that's one of the reasons that I like the icons down in the bottom, the blue K, is that if that K is blue, they're talking to the internet, and they're talking to the K server, so no okay. matter what they say is going on, you know that they have internet connectivity, and the reverse is true, if that K is gray, you know that they're not connected, so it's, you know, how long does it take for it to time out? It, it's like, pretty quick, it's pretty fast. Uh, the thing checks in every 90 seconds, but it's usually even less than that when it when it disconnects. Okay. Okay. 
All right, so we've got so we so machine groups you're going to use all the time. The first thing you do when somebody calls up is select the, the group that they're in so that you can see what's surrounding them. Now, the third one is my favorite one. I actually have to stop myself talking about this because I can go on for half an hour just telling you about all the different things that we've ever done <laughs> using these views. It's, it's, it's out of control. But here's the, the at the top of the screen are the two that you're going to find yourself using more often than not. Show me all my servers at ABC Maryland. I don't have any. Okay, show me all my servers in all my groups or, or, or even in just the, a, the ABC company. Well, I, I still don't have any, right? There are no servers out there. Uh, show me the workstations in all my groups. Okay, yep, I, I'm going to have two workstations. Now, it eliminated the templates, right? Because template isn't a workstation or a server. It's a template. It doesn't have an operating system on it, so it doesn't show up here. So yeah, I've got two of these. So you you know you start you see how we, we can combine them together, you know, and show hey I want to see all the workstations at Maryland, and now I'm going to get down to one right because I combine those two together. So this is a very powerful. These are sample views. Please create your own. You can go up here to the top and create your your own your own views if you like to. It's it, 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 these are just ideas How do you of things. Them? Do you click edit? You click view, yeah. You go to like the way I would do it is say no you know no view, and then I would basically click the edit button, and then I would go in and I I create I would hit save as all right. So of course I would say I'm going to say Dell computers. Okay, I want to I want to create a view of all the Dell computers. All right. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to go find, now first of all, if I only wanted Dell workstations, I could select OS type equal workstations. All right. Um, what you're going to see here is down one of the, one of the uh, uh, powerful ways of finding a, a group of machines is using the advanced data filter. When I click on this filter, it's going to bring up every, like all those columns that we selected. These are all inventory items. You can actually report and and create a view based on any of them so I can go to the manufacturer and type in like asterisk Dell asterisk and save that okay and then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit say, just save that again and then I'm gonna close that and then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna say hey show me all the Dell computers and of course it's gonna show me but let me go and show you that all groups it eliminated the other machine mm. right I could I could have said show me the VM machines you know, anything that began with VMware. So now I could continue to refine this, and I could go in and say, look, I want, you know, workstations. Uh, let's say I want Windows XP computers with uh, only the ones that have, still have Service Pack 2. So this would show me the Dell XP Service Pack 2, you know. Uh, Dell laptops, remember the battery laptop recall that happened years ago? You know, we were able to go through and create a view that showed us just the Dell laptops. And then we exported, we ran a report with just that view. We exported to Excel. We did a mail merge. We sent an email out to all of our clients saying, hey, your laptop may be recalled. Here's the details. And, and you know, we, we, we went through a couple thousand machines to find that. We never, you know, it would take hours to manually search through them. We probably wouldn't have done it. We probably would have just sent a generic email out to everybody saying, hey, if you have a Dell laptop, you're in trouble. But we were able to actually sure. send it to people that actually had Dell laptops and tell them that. <laughs> So it was really, oh, really cool. Um, here's another one that I, that I like a lot. Uh, can't, can't slide that. Is uh, software. Hey, show me all the machines that have AVG installed on them. Okay, again, this machine's coming up, but the other machine isn't. Probably no, no um, antivirus on that VM machine. How do we do that? Well, what we do is we're basically going in there and saying, hey, show me all the machines that contain a specific executable unique to AVG, in this case, avgui.exe. Now, cool. what if I created a view with, like, malware? What if, what if I cleaned off, like, AV2011 from, from this machine, right? You, you just finished cleaning that off of a, of a client's machine, and you want to see if any of your other clients are infected with it. Go up here, create a view called Latest Malware, and then just keep changing this executable because we do an audit every day we gather all this information every single day so it's going to basically detect if any of your other machines have that you know that that antivirus or that piece of malware Can you hiding out for there. more than one exe file no or? just one at a time unfortunately there's no comma right. or anything like that you can put wild cards in there but you can't list more than one okay you'd have to create different views for it 
That's still pretty useful. <laughs> it's really useful, okay? And then and then when you get your list of machines, let's say that you know you get that list of machines, you can go over to you know say agent procedures and find malware byte script and push that out to all those machines and run malware bytes just on that subset of machines. Again, a lot of this is more impressive when there's a hundred machines here than two, you know. So uh, just just imagine, you know, what it would be like when you when you start getting a lot of machines here. Knowing your inventory and being able to find things is very very powerful part. Doing reports for your clients so that you can actually sit down with them and show them an inventory of all their machines is really nice to have. Mm. Okay. So that is the basics of um, getting started. Hopefully, you've got enough knowledge now to uh, organize your machines. Uh, we talked about the deployment packages. We talked about land watch, and we talked about kind of some views and the filters. And your next step is to schedule some time on my calendar. To And, and what we're going to have is we have two uh, one-hour sessions that you can schedule. The first one is called monitoring. We're going to go through all the different configurations and talk about alerting and assigning monitoring monitor sets and event sets and, and you know agent offline alerts and all that kind of good stuff. That's going to take a pretty close to an hour to do. So that's a one that's a session just in and of itself. And then we've got another session that's called um, that we're going to cover agent procedures. We're going to talk about the default agent procedures. And then we're also going to cover patch management. And that's pretty important because you're going to have to you know approve your patches and everything. So um, you, you might want to hit that one um, sooner than later. And uh, there's a few things left on the agent tab that I'm going to probably cover in one of the two as well. So um, anyway, listen, I, I appreciate you uh, sitting in. Um, if you have any questions, anytime you need technical support, please send emails to help at virtualadministrator.com. That's how you get tech support. If it's a how-to question, uh, f feel free to email me, chris at virtualadministrator.com, and, and I'll, you know, I'll do some screenshots or whatever. And again, uh, you'll find on my calendar, um, there's a 30-minute Q&A session. You can always schedule time if you just want to go through and, and you know, ask a bunch of questions that are better answered one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to help you. All right? Cool. Thanks very, very cool. much. Have, hope you have a great day. All right. You too. Thank you. Thanks.